that's the struggle we're having right now when we're selling these multifamily uh, big ranches are these high net worth homes. What's the biggest frustration for you or your clients when it comes to the 1031 exchange? Um, is it something like you wish crypto could be 1031 exchange? Like what's kind of your idea there? Yeah, I think Bitcoin, crypto, Ethereum, Solano, the list goes on. That's coming strong to the real estate space. And if you're not looking at it, if you're not studying the metaverse, if you're not studying um, cryptocurrency, you're fooling yourself. It's coming. So let's just put that out there. We said it here first. Because I'm blown away at how many realtors are saying, well, it really won't affect us. No, this is coming our way. Like, so get ready. But yeah, 1031s, I would say the, the biggest struggle we have, because I sell a lot of ranches too. So in Texas, you know, 1,500 acre ranches, they want a 1031 out of it. There's obviously a lot going on there. Um, trying to identify the right property in a market where there's no inventory. <laughs> That's the struggle we're having right now when we're selling these multifamily uh, big ranches are these high net worth homes uh, is where do we move our where do we move our equity into and do we have the time to identify the right property? Yeah, I call it the shotgun wedding, right? You know, those friends that got married real quick, and engaged and married fast. You got 45 day engagement. You got 180 days to get married, right? And sometimes you overpay, right? And you don't find that deal that you want to buy. And you're basically letting the tax tail wag the, wag the investment dog. And then you couple that with the baby boomers, Terrence. This is kind of staggering. Like there's literally about $32 trillion that's going to pass from the baby boomers to the millennials in the next 20 years. And this is known as the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet. 10,000 baby boomers turning 65 every day, 77 million in the U.S. alone. Then, then you say all-time highs in the stock market, real estate values, crypto until the last like month and a half or so, it's kind of dropped, right? And Bitcoin's um, back up over 40 today. Is it? Okay, all right, it's back, baby. So all that being said, we have a solution for this, and I'm curious what you think. I don't know if you've ever heard about this thing, but we call it the Netflix to the old blockbuster. You know how like EXP is the you know the Netflix to the old 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 school uh, brokerage model? Well, we have a thing called a deferred sales trust. It's not a Delaware statutory trust. It's not a TIC. It's not a 1031. In fact, it allows you to exit out of cryptocurrency, public or private stock, primary homes, ranches, businesses, real estate. Remember, a 1031 blockbuster only works for investment real estate. It doesn't work for any of those other assets. The cool thing is once you're there, the funds can be invested with you, all tax deferred, whenever you want, into real estate, okay? And to me, like it blew my brain. I'm sitting at Marcus and Miller Chap. I'm like, no, 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 we're the Navy SEALs of multifamily investment, 1031 exchanges, brokerages, all the, and this is 2009. And I felt like I was like one of the only guys like looking around going, do you hear what this guy just said? He just said we have Netflix. He just says we have the metaverse and this tax deferral strategy. And are you guys understanding if this is true and this works, what this means? And so I'll give you a couple of deal stories, Terrence, and then I'm curious what you think. So we just did a deal where she she worked for a top top tech company in California. She's in her 20s. She bought Bitcoin for about 50,000. And guess she never sold. It went to 50 million. Okay, so she has about a 49 and nine gain, okay? So she exited using our trust, right, strategy. Like a 1031, she put it into a business, okay? Tax deferred, all tax deferred. So she exited there, right? We have another client, he's building 72 multifamily units in Tennessee. He sold in Alabama for 2.6 million a business, partnered with it, billing it. We got some, actually we did some clients in, in Texas, in Lubbock. We got some uh, some clients who did some acreage as well. We saved their fail 1031, like your clients who were challenged with that, past their 45 day, we can save it. Like all of these things, but people hear it like the EXP thing, they're like, well, is this too good to be true? Where has it been? What's the thing? But I'm curious, had you heard about that? And what are your thoughts on all that? Man, it's crazy. Um, it's one of those deals where it came across my desk. Um, you know, because obviously at this point, just being in the NFL and being an entrepreneur now for 15 years and being really pretty much in finance the last 15 years, finance and real estate, I've, I've seen a lot come across my desk. But this one came across my desk a couple of years ago and it did feel that way. It was like, well, man, that seems a little like something not right. Or, you know, do we got to set it up a certain way? If we don't do it that way, it, does it come back to hunt us? And now we got to be double taxed like. So you're right. I think it's I think I think the thing is with, with life and when people don't understand something, it creates fear, uncertainty and, um, you know, almost that like uh, apprehensiveness. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think, like you said, with EXP, once you really study the model, then you're like, that makes so much sense. I just had this mental block because people had told me so much negative stuff. Right. And so, yeah, I mean, I would love to hear more about it and dive into it. But 
I haven't. I haven't. Yeah. So you go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com for those who are wondering. 